Sola Scriptura, everyone. This is His Word Only. Alright, let's get right into this. So today we're going to be going over the Sabbath and why we should keep it and that it's a specific day and what the rest is, right? And the, the main rest that's coming, right? But anyways, let's get into this. Alright, we're going to start in Hebrews 4, 1-11. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left to us entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it for unto you was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it for we which have believed do enter into rest as he said as i have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. <laughs> so, there it is. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise. Okay. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they or they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day. Okay. Saying in David today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus have given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth or therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us there or let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So I just want to point out a few things here. Hebrews is the New Testament, and this is after Jesus died, right? Now, Jesus died on a high Sabbath day, right? The Passover. That's what the Passover is about, right? Now I want to show you this, so you guys can get the context of what this is saying here, right? Because without it, you don't really understand it. But anyways, Mark 2 and 28. Therefore, the Son of Man is, um, is Lord also of the Sabbath. Huh. This is Mark. 2 to 28. So, after all that, it's about Jesus. The Sabbath, right? So people say, well, we're, we rest in Jesus. Yeah. And we also come into a specific day, right? Where we learn all about His Word. Yes, you read it every day, right? But this is a specific day that God said he was going to come down, meet with you, and we're just going to learn about his word. Now, who is the word? Jesus Christ. Right? And let me say this. Um, the Israelites tainted the Sabbath day. <laughs> who would have thunk it? You know, it, the Sabbath day is... You work for six days, you take a day off on the seventh day. That's what it's about. <laughs> That's all it is. Nowhere do you say you can't heal, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know. It says what you do for work, take a day off. This goes for everybody in the household. 
a sojourner, a uh, you know, a servant, a bond bondman, bondmaid, all of them. The cattle and the animals didn't do any of the work, right? And it was a day of rest. And it was a day to remember that God created this world in his word or through his word. Right? And the word became flesh. And that's Jesus. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into Isaiah 58, 7, or 13 to 14. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, and not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Hey man, I, I need to pull away from doing my own pleasure on the Sabbath day, right? <laughs> it's something I need to work on. But anyways, um, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Pretty, you know, up front, right? It's right there, guys. It's right there. Anyways, Exodus 20, 8 through 11. So this is all about the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord thy God. This is the ten, These are the commandments here, guys, right? And thou shalt not do any work, though nor thy son, or thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, maidservant, nor cattle, nor stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, in or the sea, and all them that is it, or that is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, which means he set it apart. He did it for a reason. <laughs> right God doesn't do anything just out of a whim or whatever you know he does things for a reason and it's all there to bring to remembrance of his son right and what his son's going to do and what his son did right that's what it's about and why people hate it's like almost they hate the Sabbath day man they just don't want anything to do with it and let me say this, you know, the Hebrew root movement has tainted this. Look, I come from that, okay, so I know what I'm talking about there. That's a whole cesspool, let me tell you. Ended up being a cesspool. But anyways, um, but it's all there, guys. If we would just read the Word of God, you know, and kind of be willing to pull away from our traditions that we've been taught, right? I have preconceived notions. <laughs> but anyways, John fourteen fifteen through 18. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Oh, okay. that must be Old Testament God, right? Oh, wait. John fourteen fifteen through 18. Huh. I thought those things were done away with. But here's Jesus. Remember, the Word became flesh. You know, the Word was God. Why people separate them, I don't know why. Because they'll say, well, these are Jesus' commandments. But Jesus said, I did not come to bring my own words, but the words of the Father. <laughs> so, anyways, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. This is important. <laughs> Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. 
but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right? Amen. Anyways, Mark 16 and 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and uh, Salome, Salome, <laughs> I don't know, okay, had brought um, sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Jesus, right? <laughs> There it is. And when the Sabbath was passed, so they waited till the Sabbath was passed. Now, I also want to get, or that, that might be a little bit later. Hold on a second. I actually did need to talk about this. So, um, the disciples met on the seventh day and then the first day of the week, right? See, what happens is, is you got the whiff side, right, and it's, it's the Sabbath day, you know, Saturday, you need to meet on Saturday, and then the right side, no, it's Sunday, <laughs> you know what I mean, and the reality is, is the disciples met on Saturday, they also met on Sunday, I mean, there it is, but anyways, Acts 20 and 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now we're going to get into Matthew 12, 1 through, uh, what is this here? Sorry. 1 through 7. Okay. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were and hungered. And began to pluck the ears of the corn and to eat. This is where people say he broke the Sabbath, right? Stuff like that. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, the disciples do which that is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Do you remember anywhere where it said they couldn't do this? And actually, based on the law of God, sojourners got to eat the the farmers were supposed to set off a portion of their land where sojourners and the poor and all them could eat and do you remember anywhere where god said that you couldn't do this this is interesting what jesus says here though anyways okay behold the disciples do which is not lawful upon um, the sabbath day but he said unto them have ye not read what david did when he was hungered, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or have ye not read in the law, how that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath? He's saying they do this themselves, they profane it themselves, and are blameless. But I say unto you, that it, uh, in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye knowing that this, or uh, sorry, but if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. Did you see here? This is the key word. Guiltless. Based on God's actual laws. The oral Torah has tainted the Israelites, let me say, right? The Hebrews, maybe. And, and what it is, it's man's interpretation on how you should follow the law of God. Instead of just reading it through the word of God right <laughs> is what that is it's a it's a little gateway right they put a little fence and then they called coddle you into this fence right and then they have two of their priests sitting on that gateway you know 
constricting the information, right? So that way, they're the gatekeepers, right? That's what they do. And Jesus is calling them out for it. <laughs> he didn't break it. None of them broke it, right? They were just traveling, and they were hungry. You know, God just said, what you do for work, just stop. He didn't say you couldn't travel and that you couldn't eat, <laughs> you know? But anyways, I just wanted to get that out there. Okay, 1 Corinthians three sixteen and 17. Here we go. This is that temple that's greater, right, than that temple that was there. 1 Corinthians three sixteen to 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? That means you. Sorry, that was a weird point there. <laughs> but anyways, it's you guys. It's us. I mean, we are the temple of God. Doesn't mean that we are gods, right? It just means he lives inside of us. Imagine what you could do by realizing that. And I don't mean being a super saiyan or a superman, you know what I mean? But just the healing you could do, you know, just when God says it, you know, and you're going to go and do it, right? God says move a mountain, like Jesus says there, who has a little bit of a faith of a mustard seed, be able to move a mountain if God says it. Now, if God doesn't say it and you try to move a mountain, it ain't going to move, <laughs> right? But anyways, okay. And if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So, we are the temple of God, the body of Christ. Okay. Revelation 21, 1-7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was were passed away. This is the final rest, right? Anyways. And there was no more sea. And I saw, jo er, I saw John, or my goodness, and John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, guys, I'm going to point this out here. This frustrates me. <laughs> but um, how people, you know, they'll say Jesus is going to reign for a thousand years, and he's going to give up his kingdom, right? But we totally forget the fact that the word was God and that God put the government on his shoulders right so when Jesus comes down here he's reigning forever right he's the king forever <laughs> but anyways um, I just had to bring, put that out there okay and God shall wipe away um, the, all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death See how you can see this is the rest, the main rest, right? Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, are we resting now? We're in his peace, you know, but we're still battling the spirit and the flesh, or there's a battle between the spirit and the flesh still, right? So this is the main one here, right? This is the one that we're laboring to get to, right? We're, it's why the Sabbath day is, like I keep saying with the commandments and all that stuff, it's practice. There are rehearsals on how to be the people of God. But anyways. Okay. And he sat upon the throne, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that over overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen to that. <laughs> like I always like to end on good notes here, guys. There's a coming day where we will rest forever. <laughs> right? And this is what we look to. This is our, the blessed hope. Right? And we'll be able to follow Jesus wherever he goes. We'll be like his magistrate, I guess, for lack of a better term. <laughs> you know? He's God's right hand man. We'll be his right hand men and women, right? But anyways, I hope you guys can see that the Sabbath is about Jesus Christ, right? It says right here, <laughs> right? Mark two twenty eight. Therefore, the Son of Man is the Lord also of the Sabbath, right? It's right there. But anyways. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a wonderful day.